Decades after Freddy Krueger's chilling debut as one of horror's most notorious monsters, Robert England still credits his time as the character for taking his career to new heights. However, taking on the role of Freddy Krueger also completely changed the actor's life. Robert England never set out with the intention of playing a monster like Freddy Krueger. In fact, his earliest work was in theatre, and from there he found himself playing sidekicks in supporting roles. He also played some unsavoury characters in films like Eaten Alive, and appeared in controversial movies like Dead and Buried. But playing Freddy was an entirely new experience. England told Hollywood Chicago, I had gotten typed early in Hollywood as a southerner, then it was the best friend and sidekick roles. Although playing Freddy was a big step up from his previous parts, England has said that the reason he got the role was simply because of typecasting. He had experience working in the horror genre, and this time, he just got to play the main villain instead of a side character. This is it, Jennifer. Your big break in TV. But England isn't resentful of the fact that he was typecast. As he explained, I didn't choose to be in horror movies, I just like to go where I'm wanted. One of the perks of playing an iconic monster like Freddy Krueger, England may not be winning Oscars or raking in the biggest salaries in Hollywood, but even though he's in his early 70s, he never finds himself wanting for work, and he has plenty of freedom to choose the projects he wants. England acknowledges that if he'd never gotten the opportunity to play Freddy, he probably wouldn't be enjoying the same level of success today. He's been consistently working in Hollywood since landing a supporting role in the 1974 film Buster and Billy, but after playing Freddy, the offers started flooding in. As a result, he's acted in movies like The Phantom of the Opera and Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, TV shows like Bones and Supernatural, and in 2020, he hosted a show on the Travel Channel called True Terror. The role literally opened a whole new world for the actor. He told Looper, I started working abroad. I've done about a dozen movies in Europe. I've done movies in Africa and Russia. I've done movies in South America and Mexico. Lots of movies in Canada. And that is the greatest gift that was given to me by the success of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. England also attends conventions around the world. He told Den of Geek, I don't think I'd have this longevity without the genre. I can't believe I'm still here. It keeps changing and growing, and I feel like I'm on cruise control now. I can go where I want. Robert England had been a working actor for years before playing Freddy, but after Elm Street came out, his life seemed to change overnight. And there's always fans around now. I mean, the crew are bringing their kids in and stuff. So. I'm kind of on a little bit. Suddenly, audiences all over the world knew his name, and the film made a huge cultural impact. England told Hollywood Chicago, The Freddy phenomenon was international. I had no control over it. I realized it's best to surrender and enjoy it, because you can't fight it. For the first time, he was experiencing what it was really like to be an international star, not just an actor with a few films and TV shows under his belt. It was a whole new level of fame, but he simply embraced the changes and didn't allow it to overwhelm him. In fact, England enjoys the attention, especially when it comes to seeing his name appear in different languages around the world. He told Looper, I really like foreign posters, especially the ones where my name is written in Russian or Chinese. Chinese. I think that's cool, and some of them are just amazing. There's one from Thailand, A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors with the Freddy Snake. It's a strange, creepy poster, but it's an image of me swallowing an Oscar-winning actress, so I had to have it. Robert England always knew that what he wanted to do for the rest of his life was theatre. After attending a professional acting school and working in regional theatre, he started to get opportunities in film, but he still valued everything he'd learned acting in plays. And when he got the role of Freddy, he was finally able to put those skills to good use again. There was so much he could express about Freddy's character through body language, and his theatre skills gave him a leg up. 
He told Looper, I learned back in my theatre days that villains are better written. They're more complex, there are more layers, and it's fun to do it. When I finally got all that makeup on and found the voice and found the moves, I realised I didn't have to worry about what Robert England looked like. It's traveling time! <laughs> Fear seems to be an international language. England realised just how well the narratives in films like Elm Street could translate across cultures when he saw the worldwide response to the film. There are certain primal terrors that affect all of us, no matter where we're from, and Elm Street played on those emotions. The thought of someone attacking you in your sleep when you're most vulnerable and totally defenceless is an ancient fear, one that we've lived with since since humanity's caveman days. England told Movie Hole, These movies have travelled so well, you don't really need subtitles with them, because they're not that culturally specific. Everyone has this great primal basic hook, which is the nightmare, the bad dream, so people can identify with these films. Following Elm Street's success, England accepted more offers to work on films shot abroad, where he was able to indulge his love of travel and history. The actor has worked on movies shot everywhere from Italy to Israel, and he's always been very grateful that playing Freddy opened up those doors for him. In fact, he says that nowadays, he often prefers working abroad. He told IGN, I would never have been able to go down into the caves in the Dordogne region and seen the original Neanderthal graffiti. I would never have been invited to Lake Balaton in Czechoslovakia. I never would have spent six weeks putting my makeup on in the same room that Rasputin was shot in. These are all the things that happened because I'm Freddy Krueger. Pure and simple. Although England is certainly best known for his work in horror films, he also enjoys comedy. Unfortunately, the fact that his name and face were so strongly associated with Freddy Krueger in the 80s and 90s meant that comedy directors weren't exactly knocking on his door and asking to work with him audiences knew him as a villain, not a comedian, and England knows that he missed out on some roles because of it. I'm sorry I, I, I kept scaring you, but I work on commission. And work on funny. But at the end of the day, he's come to accept that it was all for the best. England admitted to IGN, I think in the middle 80s there were a couple of gigs in comedy, both as an actor and director, that I lost because I was so, so connected with Freddy Krueger. I wish it hadn't happened. However, he has no regrets about pursuing work in the horror genre and sacrificing some comedic roles because of that decision. After all, no actor can really do it all, and in the long run, his career decisions have clearly worked out in his favour. If you ever found yourself lying awake at night after watching Elm Street, afraid to close your eyes because Freddy Krueger just might show up in your dreams, you're in good company. Elm Street has resulted in plenty of sleepless nights for audiences over the years, as well as a few cast members. In fact, England himself admits that he's had nightmares in which he's Freddy. Wait a second. Now let me get this straight. You're having nightmares about Freddy? As in me. While shooting at night for the original film, England spent hours and hours wearing the heavy makeup that created Freddy's frightening look. He got used to seeing himself looking monstrous, but every once in a while, he would catch a glimpse of himself in a mirror at the end of a long day and feel disoriented and confused by his own reflection, and that feeling has haunted him for years. England told This Bird's Day, Occasionally, I do have a nightmare. I dream of me sitting up and I'm looking in the mirror. And it's not me, it's Freddy in the mirror. So yeah, that's how you know a slasher villain is truly terrifying, when the guy behind the mask is having bad dreams. At this point, you could definitely consider Robert England to be an expert on horror films in general. The genre is certainly in the midst of a modern resurgence, and England says that after so many years of playing creepy characters, he's developed an eye for which films will be successful and which ones will flop. So what qualities can really make or break a horror movie? According to England, it all depends on whether or not the film offers something genuinely unique 
unique. He told Flavorwire, If something is good or original, it does eventually get discovered. It can take a while, but it will rise to the surface. And as you might expect, England is glad that horror is finally getting the recognition and respect that he's always believed the genre deserves. Back in the 1980s, he found himself defending horror films for their artistic merit because they weren't taken as seriously. And now the genre has entered a whole new era. For England, one of the best parts of playing Freddy is the fact that younger generations still love the Elm Street films. Although it's been decades since the original movie was released, Freddy still scares new audiences today. Dad, you've got to see this movie. It's totally terrifying. That's because it's based on a true story. Wait, what? Freddy's coming for you. You can sleep when you're dead. England credits technological advances since the first film with its long-standing appeal. Although the continuation of the franchise franchise certainly didn't hurt either. With several Elm Street films coming out in the years since the original, including the Friday the 13th crossover, Freddy vs. Jason, fans had a whole lot of new material to look forward to. England told Nerd Bastards, A Nightmare on Elm Street came of age at the same time as MTV, early cable, and then VHS generation, and the DVD generation, and then Blu-ray and Netflix. So I'm probably on my third generation of fans by now. The actor said that the digitally remastered versions of the films represented a significant improvement in quality, adding, the movies look better now than when they did when they came out, so there's a great advantage I have. You forgot where you came from, kid. But I know where you're going. England talked to Looper about what he's learned over the years as far as what the character means to fans, saying, I've met thousands of fans whose memory of Nightmare on Elm Street is not as a horrible, violent film. They have great, fond memories of watching it with their mums and dads and brothers and sisters. They have these memories of a family experience. Can Robert England ever really say goodbye to Freddy Krueger? As of right now, his answer is a definite maybe. In 2018, England appeared on the Halloween episode of the sitcom The Goldbergs as Freddy. It was the first time that he'd played the character since appearing in Freddy vs. Jason in 2003. But as far as returning to the role for another movie in the future, he's not sure he can commit to it. I'm gonna need a new actor to play Freddy because we're gonna have to do eight of them, you know? Maybe it's and Freddy's son. I might have one left in me, but... At this point, it would be pretty unrealistic to expect England to sign on to play Freddy in eight more films. Actor Jackie Earl Haley took on the role for one film in a 2010 reboot, but since this is the role that means more to England than any other, there's a good chance that we'll see him on screen and in our nightmares as Freddy once more. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.